Good morning, welcome to Thursday here on BBC One. It's now time for breakfast. Good morning, welcome to Breakfast with Naga Manchetti and Charlie State. Our headlines. The family of 12-year-old Archie Battersby say they want him to spend his final hours in a hospice today after losing a battle to stop his life support being withdrawn. Absolutely devastated, frustrated, angry, let down, so many emotions, really. Good morning. We're expecting the biggest interest rate increase in almost three decades. The Bank of England's hoping to curb inflation, but it will make borrowing more expensive. I'll have the latest. China has begun military exercises in the waters around Taiwan after expressing anger over a visit to the island by a senior US politician. England's victorious lionesses urged the next prime minister to help more schoolgirls play football. Good morning from the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, where it was a special night of athletics as Ailish McColgan ran the race of her life to emulate her mum Liz by winning gold for Scotland in the 10,000 metres. Good morning. Over the next few days, it's going to feel fresher. We're losing that humidity both by day and by night. Any rain is more likely to be in the north. No significant rain in the forecast in the south and east. I'll have all the details throughout this morning's programme. Good morning. It's Thursday, the 4th of August. The mother of 12-year-old Archie Battersby says the legal battle to postpone the withdrawal of her son's life support has come to an end. It comes after the European Court of Human Rights refused an application not to postpone the withdrawal of his treatment. His family now wants him to be taken to a hospice. Louisa Pilby has more. Interest rates are expected to rise to their highest level in almost three decades later today. So that would mean a sixth hike in a row, impacting mortgages and credit card charges for millions of people. Hannah, um, just take us through what we know at this stage announcement a little later. Yeah, well, the Bank of England looks at interest rates roughly every six weeks, what it means for all of us. Very good, Hannah. Thank you. Well, let's think about the political implications of this with our correspondent Jonathan Blake, who's in Westminster. Jonathan, you know, we've got this race for Prime Minister, the next Prime Minister, leader of the Conservative Party. A rise in interest rates, however independent the Bank of England is and however necessary it may be, this doesn't bode well when it comes to tone around the economy. Mm. Jonathan, thanks very much. Jonathan Blake there. England's victorious footballers have written an open letter urging the next Prime Minister to help ensure more girls take up the sport. Now, following their win in the European Championships on Sunday, the Lionesses have urged Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak to prioritise funding for girls' football in schools. Robert Townsend has more. China is holding major military exercises in the seas around Taiwan after a visit by a senior U.S. politician increased tensions over the island. Nancy Pelosi, who is the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, has now left Taiwan after a trip described by China as a major provocation. provocation. Let's speak now to our correspondent Rupert Wingfield Hayes, joining us from Taiwan. Rupert, very good morning to you. Just first, uh, give us a sense of the scale of this Chinese military operation and also uh, about what response there's been. Rupert, for the moment, thank you very much. Now, detectives searching for a student nurse who vanished nearly one month ago in South London continue to question three men who are arrested, who've been arrested on suspicion of murder. 24-year-old Awami Davies left her family home in Grays, Essex, and was last seen in West Croydon on the 7th of July. Police say that she was captured on CCTV in the company of a man on the night she was last seen alive. Police are keen to speak to a van driver seen passing Awami on the street. The supermarket Marks & Spencer has stopped selling disposable barbecues in all of its stores across the UK following a number of wildfires linked to last month's heat wave. Retailers said it wanted to help protect open spaces and reduce the risk of fires. Comes after the commissioner of the London Fire Brigade called for disposable barbecues to be taken off the shelves across Britain. Time now is 13 minutes past six. Good morning to you. Let's find out what's happening with the weather with Carol. Good morning, Carol. It still seems pretty pleasant out there most of the time. 
Good morning, both. Well, for some of us, yes, it is Naga, but of course, as always, it depends where you are because we have had some heavy rain overnight across parts of Northern Ireland and Scotland. Of the south could get back up towards 30 degrees, if not 30 degrees itself. Carol, thanks very much. See you later on. Pleasure. Let's take a look at today's papers. Many front pages, like the Times, leading on the possibility of a hosepipe ban across parts of the UK as the country faces drought. People living in Kent and Sussex could be the first to experience limits on their water usage. Let's have a look at the Daily Express saying there are fears soaring gas bills will push inflation to 15%. Also says mortgage rates are set to rise, as we were hearing a little earlier on. Civil rights activist Roy Hackett features on the front of The Guardian, one of the organisers of the Bristol bus boycott of 1963. His death at the age of 93 was announced yesterday. And this is the image of Katerina Johnson-Thompson after she won gold. This is last night in the heptathlon at the Commonwealth Games. Uh, she has, by her own admission, had a pretty rough couple of years uh, for various reasons. And uh, last night she came and won that gold medal. So uh, a very great moment for her. I'm going to pick up on um, the death of Roy Hackett just because it was announced yesterday. And I, don't, I think if you're not familiar with him, it's really worth kind of knowing what he did. He launched this campaign in 1963. It lasted four months. And it basically mobilised people across the city to stop using Bristol Omnibus company buses because the buses refused to hire black and Asian people. And there were lots of stories of when eventually there were black and Asian dr bus drivers, people just wouldn't get on the buses. And he was um, inspired by the bus boycotts that were in the U from the US civil rights movements. Um, so these, these protests that happened forced the company to change its policies, but also paved the way when it came to passing the Race Relations Act of 1965 and 1968. So base, bear in mind, this boycott was in 1963. And the picture there, the picture you're seeing there, is a big mural. And it, he was a, he's a massive figure in the city of Bristol. Um, he had West Indian parents. And that's, that's the picture from the West Indian yeah. and Friends Association. And it's just worth rem remembering. It was thought to be the first boycott of its kind in Britain. And he went on to co-found the Commonwealth Coordinated Committee um, and that set up St Paul's, uh, the carnival in 1968. And just that committee still runs today. It does um, feel, it does feel, uh, 1963, I mean, in some ways a long time ago, it actually sounds relatively recently that that would yeah. have been a time where there was a company refusing to employ uh, black drivers that black were in, in those days. Yeah. Absolutely. And I just think he was, <laughs> it's interesting, he was, um, it was like when people think about him, because you probably don't know much about him as a personality, a powerful, thoughtful and funny man. His force of will came through, even when I spoke to him in the 90s, this is um, someone paying tribute to him, this is a professor of black studies at Birmingham City University, but um, also said a funny man as well, just a big personality who made a massive difference in this country so it's worth remembering uh, 93 it's a, a great age as well and just uh well on the theme of the 60s uh this this was a there's a picture from western supermare actually um and anyone who's old enough and maybe more recently as well remember donkey rides have always been something of a tradition on on some british beaches but uh western supermare for example is one of those places where kids always went Donkey rides just part of the summer summertime, um, but now uh, there and also in Scarborough, real problem in getting the operators of the donkey rides to carry on because it's getting too expensive, mm. too much bureaucracy. There are too many forms to fill in, and they're just saying it's um, too expensive to carry on doing business, and they can't get uh, operators carry on. So in Scarborough, for example, they're ca they're advertising at the moment for people to do the donkey rides, but they can't uh, get people to do it. There's a quote. Um, from one of the owners of the uh, donkey companies saying uh, licensing is becoming more challenging. Uh, they, I assume that means the council, want a paper trail for everything. Uh, you now have to log a donkey's working hours, when Good. a donkey's feet are cleaned and when you've mucked out the stables, which on the face of it, uh, that is, I suppose, that is how things have changed in as much as uh, welfare for the animals who are working uh, has increased enormously. Either way, it means that uh, little kids going on donkey rides like that 
Ain't really gonna happen. Oh. I, I like the idea of logging when their feet are clean. Yeah? Hooves. Um, the time now is 20 past six. Do remember, Mike is at the Commonwealth Games scene still, so we'll be catching up with him a little later. Now, you may remember earlier this year, we spoke to the father of murdered PC Nicola Hughes, who called for a new medal to honour emergency service workers killed in the line of duty. Bryn Hughes' campaign has received huge support, including from the Scottish Government and the Mayor of Greater Manchester. As Abby Smitten reports, he's also been to meet other families who've lost loved ones in similar circumstances. And you saw, obviously, Bryn, Adrian and David there. We're going to be talking to them a little bit later in the programme to find out how they, after coming together, how they now want to move forward and their campaign to get this medal um, enacted and get it brought into practice to honour their loved ones. Uh, yes, that'll be around 20 past eight this morning. Time now, though, to get the news, the travel and the weather where you are. Hello, you're watching Breakfast with Naga Manchetti and Charlie Stay. Good morning. Coming up on the programme. It is that time of year again. We'll be revealing not one, but two Strictly Come Dancing contestants. The first ones to be announced ahead of the start of the 20th season. History makers, record breakers, game changers. Why the Lioness's success is inspiring a new generation of female footballers. And the ever-growing problem of plastic pollution in our waterways. We're going to find out what impact it's having on our wildlife. Time now is 6.30. Let's uh, stay with the sporting theme now. Go to Mike in Birmingham and catch up. Morning, Mike. Catch up with what was an amazing night of, of performances Morning. last night. Yeah, fantastic bit of history. I found a new, uh, one of these wicker statues which are all around the city to celebrate the games. These are fantastic. This is obviously a, a pommel horse athlete and actually the rhythmic gymnastics starts today. Just outside of Victoria Square, of course, steeped in history with all those monuments and buildings and it's rather an appropriate place then to reflect on, as you say, a historic night of Commonwealth Games. Action last night, a first gold medal of the Games for Northern Ireland. While in the athletics, uh, Katerina Johnson-Thompson, she's a champion again. And then this wonderful story involving mother and daughter. So Ailish McColgan won a gold medal for Scotland in the 10,000 metres just like a mum did back in the 1980s as Austin Hellwood reports. That's just about it for now, but back here at the Commonwealth Games in Victoria Square, you know, for a lot of people who come here, it's not about just seeing the sport. The sport is the beginning. It brings people together. It's a bit like the icebreaker, but so many people come here to watch the entertainment, the music. I wandered around here yesterday. It was fantastic. You meet people from all over the world, friends from all over the world, friends for life, you really. You keep in contact and you can enjoy the music and also, of course, watch the sport on the big screen. It's part of the games. Oh, All very good. It's a good atmosphere. Thanks very much, Mike. Looks lovely over there, doesn't it? I'm excited about that granny with the bowls. I'm really excited. I love, I love stories like that that come out of the Commonwealth. That, that you just meet characters that you'd never have known. Talking of characters, I think we all, most of us, completely in love with the lionesses, aren't we? We've, had, we've spoken to many already here on this programme this week. Well, later on, we're going to be talking to Alex Greenwood and Kira Walsh. And also, we're going to be talking to... The whole point of, or one of the points of um, the Lioness's legacy, talking to a load of children who are all playing football, um, referees, who are going to put their questions to them a little later on as well, but also just how they've been inspired. And of course, they have that letter that came out yesterday from the whole team um, saying, uh, urging the next Prime Minister, be it Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak, to make sure that girls get to play football in schools yeah. because it's not um, officially a targeted part of the curriculum at the moment. And it's such a such a simple but such an important yeah. question, which is wh why isn't it, why can't you have the same access? Yeah. Why you know the, the politicians particularly want to be involved in the celebrations and get on board the positive. Well, do the other thing at the same time. Might even have a bit of a kickabout as well with them. I think I'm going to leave it. To, I've got the trainers under the desk, just in case. Is that wise? No. But you know. 
Maybe not. Never mind. Let's have a rethink. <laughs> Wise isn't my middle name, let's, let's be fair. 6.37 is the time now. Now, from withered crops to reduced waterways, the long period of dry weather is having a huge impact on our outdoor spaces. In England, millions of people are facing a hosepipe ban. Concerns are growing that a drought could be on its way. As Ian Reeve reports from North Yorkshire, it's a particular worry for those working the land. And, of course, this is something that Carol will be able to talk about because we've been talking non-stop about the desire for rain in so many parts of the country. Oh, Carol, I think that map's going to tell us a lot. Morning. Yes, it is indeed, Naga. Good morning, everyone. We have had Southern England's driest July on record. And if you think about it, records go way back from the Met Office to 1835. We'll also see some rain and a bit more cloud come further south under the high pressure. Things remain dry and also settled. And you can see in Reading, for example, how the temperatures are rising. In some parts of the southeast, we do expect the temperatures Monday and Tuesday to get up as high as 30 degrees. So no significant rain in the south for the next wee while anyway, Charlie and Naga. It's the thing, isn't it, Carol? I mean, I think when you finally do get some splodges of rain on your graphics, you're going to be ever so popular. <laughs> I'm going to be ever so pleased as well. I mean, you take into account all the problems, of course, that farmers and the growers Indeed. have. But I look at my own garden and it's like the Gobi Desert. The sand, the soil rather, is like sand. It's really powdery. The, the lawn is brown. You'll work your magic, Carol. I know you will. <laughs> Do you call them splodges, Carol? Do you call them splodges or something else? Is there a technical Spl term? Splodges or splashes. That's not really technical, though, Charlie. That's just our lingo. That's all. But yes, both are good because if you've got a splash, it's not like a dynamic band of rain coming in from a weather front, for example. It's just here and there you'll get a splash of rain. Or a splodge. Or a splodge. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, Carol, thank you. 6.45 is the Pleasure. time now. So a challenge with a difference for you. A man from Yorkshire is expected to be confirmed as a new Guinness World Record holder after he reached speeds of 40 miles an hour in his electric wheelchair operated by his head. Sounds remarkable. Jason Liversidge was diagnosed with motor neuron disease in 2013. He's paralysed from the neck down. He needs a ventilator to breathe. But as Joe Maycall reports, that certainly hasn't stopped his need for speed. Jason did well there, didn't he? Look at all that. I love all the um, the drama, you know, the failed journeys and then finally, and actually got near 50 at one point. It's that quite is quite scary. an achievement. Quite, quite achievement. scary. 6.49 the time now. So with more than 60,000 streets within a six mile radius, taxi drivers in London certainly have their work cut out for them. Now, traditionally, it's a job mostly done by men, but now one woman is on a mission to get more female cabbies on the road. Lisa Seymour is helping other women pass the challenging knowledge test of routes around the city, and she's doing it for free. And she joins us along with one of her students. That's Laura Wall. Very good morning to both of you this morning. <coughs> and then I'll fidget even more. Uh, Lisa, Laura, very good morning to you both. Uh, Lisa, first of all, tell us, you are the teacher in this situation. What, what, what is it, why do you want more women to take up cab driving and why do you think so few do so at the moment? Oh, well, good luck to you and uh, I hope the rest all. of the training goes very well. And I'm so sorry you've had a few, we've had communication. Oh, thank you it's so a bit much. like when you're in the back, someone's in the back of your cab and you can't hear them properly through the glass. Uh, it's one of those mornings this morning. Thank you both. Absolutely, no problem. Yeah, that's all right. They did very well there. It's nothing more discombobulating when you can't hear and you're trying to do a broadcast. Well done, Lisa and Laura. Now, it is time. We'll be back with you at 7 with the headlines. But first, find out what's happening in terms of news, travel and weather, wherever you are. Good morning, welcome to Breakfast with Naga Manchetti and Charlie State. Our headlines. The family of 12-year-old Archie Battersby say they want him to spend his final hours in a hospice today after losing a battle to stop his life support being withdrawn. Absolutely devastated, frustrated, angry, let down, so many emotions really. We're expecting the biggest interest rate increase in almost three decades. The Bank of England's hoping to curb inflation, but it will make borrowing more expensive. I'll have the latest. 
China has begun military exercises in the waters around Taiwan after expressing anger over a visit to the island by a senior US politician. England's victorious lionesses urge the next prime minister to help more schoolgirls play football. We'll talk to two members of the European Championship winning team. And good morning from the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, where it was a special night of athletics for Ailish McColgan of Scotland, who, like her mum, took gold in the 10,000 metres, and for Katerina Johnson-Thompson of England, who became the champion again in heptathlon. Good morning. Over the next few days and nights, it's going to be less humid than it has been. For many of us, it's going to be a forecast of sunshine and showers. Most of the showers will be in the north and the west, and no significant rain will be needed in the south and east. I'll have all the details throughout this morning's programme. It's nearly that time of year for the Strictly contestants to be announced. We'll reveal the first two contestants on this year's Strictly this morning on BBC Breakfast. Good morning. It's Thursday the 4th of August. Now, the mother of 12-year-old Archie Battersby says the legal battle to postpone the withdrawal of her son's life support has come to an end. It comes after the European Court of Human Rights refused an application not to postpone the withdrawal of his treatment. His family now wants him to be taken to a hospice. Louisa Pilbeam has this report. Let's talk to our reporter Catherine de Costa, who joins us now from London, from Royal London Hospital. Catherine, what happens now? Indeed. OK, Catherine, thanks very much. Catherine de Costa there. The Bank of England is expected to announce its rise, raising interest rates again later in a bid to control rising inflation. Let's go to our political correspondent, Jonathan Blake, who's in Westminster. So, Jonathan, just talk us through this decision, of course, made independently by the Bank of England, but it is nonetheless significant politically. Jonathan, thank you. China is holding major military exercises in the seas around Taiwan after a visit by a senior U.S. politician increased tensions over the island. Nancy Pelosi, who is the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, has now left Taiwan after a trip described by China as a major provocation. Let's talk to our China correspondent Stephen McDonnell, who joins us now from Beijing. Now, Stephen, there's been a lot of noise around this, um, but that noise, how much is it being taken seriously, I suppose, in time, in terms of time, as in how immediate is this threat of the China retaliating? Indeed. Uh, Stephen, thanks so much. Stephen McDonnell there for us. Time's just going up to 10 minutes past seven. England's victorious footballers have written an open letter urging the next Prime Minister to help ensure more girls take up the sport. Following that win in the Euros on Sunday, the Lionesses have urged Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak to prioritise funding for girls' football in schools. Robert Townsend has more. It's going to be a very exciting morning for them, isn't it? Because they're going to meet their heroes. Heroes. They're going to meet their heroes. Uh, let's get a look at the weather at uh, 13 minutes past seven on a Thursday morning. Carol, how's it going? Well, we've got a bit of everything on Miss Charlie. Good morning, everybody. First of all, it's not as humid for most of us to start the day as it was yesterday morning. Dry with some sunshine further south and highs up to 23 degrees. So Charlie and Naga, if you're looking for significant rain in the forecast, it's not here for the next few days anyway. Carol, thank you very much. Naga has uh, disappeared outside, actually, because you saw a moment ago she's going to be catching up with some of those uh, young footballers uh, inspired by the England win. So let's move on to matters financial. Uh, the Bank of England today expected to announce it's raising interest rates once again. All of this, Hannah, is about trying to control inflation. But it, in the meantime, this could hurt for mortgages. It certainly could. Every time this comes around, it has a big impact, or it can have a big impact on people's credit card bills and on their mortgages. And this time, perhaps more than most, because this time the decision really could be a big one. We're looking at potentially the biggest single monthly rise in interest rates in 27 years. That's because inflation the rate at which prices are rising is at its highest level for 40 years. So big challenges ahead for whoever ends up with the keys for number 10. We'll find out more from the Bank of England on interest rates at 12 o'clock and tomorrow I'll be looking at what that decision means for you. 
Anna, thanks very much. Time now is 19 minutes past seven. One of the most striking images at the Commonwealth Games so far came from that crash at the velodrome on Sunday. It was a high-speed collision involving several riders, resulting in England's Matt Walls being catapulted over the barriers and into the crowd with his bike. He and two other cyclists were taken to hospital, and there was also a serious injury to a member of the public. Now there are calls for an urgent safety review. Laura Scott has the details. I'm very pleased to say uh, former Olympic uh, champion cyclist Chris Baldwin is here with me this morning. Chris, morning to you. I mean, the first thing to say, most importantly, is that uh, Matt Walls is OK. I mean, you know, he was injured, and but he's pretty much OK. Checked out that night, a couple of stitches. So, yeah, he yeah. got away with it. It was, certainly wasn't funny to watch. And again, the same, same with the, the, those people in the crowd that also minor injuries and there's sort of no, nothing so much to worry about but it begs a lot of questions now it's fascinating watching you watching that i think we can can we bring up the still of the of that moment now with your expert eye and you've been on the track and you've you've commented what well, do you, i was commentating what do you, on this race so what are you seeing when you look at that picture just sort of talk us through what you're seeing i think like everybody else it is it is spectacular uh, okay chris thank you very much for that talking about risk have you ever as a former olympian been uh, the thought about taking the risk of joining Strictly Come Dancing as a contestant, is that a risk you would be prepared to take? I think it would be a risk for everybody else if I, if I did that. <laughs> I've been asked a couple of times for, for that and, and, uh, and, and some of the others, but I think life's just a bit full. It's more the time commitment than anything else to actually oh. have to, to commit to doing it. It's not easy, is it? So no is the answer. That was the answer. Nice to see you this morning. We're talking <laughs> about that because uh, it is that time of year again when the uh, contestants are announced. Thousands. Strictly Come Dancing just a month away now. And this morning at breakfast, we will be revealing a little later on two of the contestants will be battling it out. So that's coming up a little later on. Time now to get news, travel and weather. There you are. Hello, welcome back to Breakfast Time Now. It's 7.32 with me, Charlie State, here in the studio. And Naga is outside this morning because after their remarkable success, the Lionesses and the Euros attention now turning to the development of the next generation of female footballers. Uh, if we nip outside, uh, Naga is with some of those who possibly, Naga, will be the stars of the future. The question, of course, is, oh, are, are you going to do the commentating for us? Is it Yes! Oh, there we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I hadn't got it in. I hadn't got it in. All those practices, I was delighted. Sorry. Charlie, thank you very, very much. Um, yes, I am joined by the stars of the future. Um, I've got Laura with me here. Who? Hi, Laura. You train a lot of the girls here. Um, it's great to see them out and about kicking and everything. It's fantastic. Um, first of all, how good was that goal? Do you fancy giving this 47-year-old woman a few more tips? Yeah. Cool. Right, we're cracking back on with this because we've got football to play. Mike is at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. Mike, you take it away now. I'm busy. See you later. Yes, yeah. Oh! Get him for goal. Mike. <laughs> Sorry, Nagat, I was just admiring your amazing skills there. We're just watching you on the big screen. How about that? I could actually see you up there in Salford. Fantastic. Anyway, I'm right in Victoria Square, outside the, um, the museum and art gallery. Fantastic place of history. And an appropriate place to reflect on a historic night at the Commonwealth Games. Wasn't it the first gold medal of these games for Northern Ireland in the swimming pool? While in athletics, it was a moment of redemption for Katarina Johnson-Thompson, who won uh, the gold in the heptathlon once more. And also a great story for Ailish McColgan, who, just like her mum did back in the 1980s, won gold for Scotland in the 10,000 metres, as Dostin Hellwood reports. Got a Yay, message from Goliath then. Go. <laughs> there we are. If you're watching, Grant, you've got support from your team Wells a teammate, yeah. Olivia Bream. We've also got the diving uh, beginning today. Jack Laurel got five golds at the last Commonwealth Games. He goes in the one metre springboard final, one of the big stars of the Games. He was the one of the flag bearers, of course, for Team England as well. And it's the start of the rhythmic gymnastics. But that's it. I'm going to try and keep up with Olivia. You're going to teach you a few sprinting hey. techniques. Sprint <laughs> we'll run off. Come on, let's show me how it's done. <laughs> Wait. He's off. Come on. <laughs> He's off. Off and away. We're all being very active this morning. Absolutely. Apart from the sofa dweller, which is me. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's absolutely. Someone's got to sit on the sofa, right, Carol? Even Someone has to hold the place together. Even Carol's standing. <laughs> 
Yes, that's true. On, on all counts, actually. Good morning, everybody. This morning, it's not as muggy a start for most of us as it has been, except for in the far southeast. But these are the temperatures that are going to greet you if you're just stepping outside. So it's not a particularly cold start to the day. And over the next few days, again, here at times, it will be breezy. That extends into Monday as well. And if anything, Nagat and Charlie, as we head in through the weekend and into the early part of next week, temperatures are going to rise once again. Carol, thanks very much. Pleasure. Uh, we'll get much more from Carol a little later in the programme. Of course, now, the effect plastic waste is having on birds around the world has been highlighted in a new study which has been carried out by UK-based scientists. Many of the images sent to researchers show birds nesting in rubbish or tangled up in it. Our science correspondent, Victoria Gill, has the story. Let's see, time now is just coming up to 7.50. What does that mean? You tell me. It means Strictly Come Dancing is shortly to return. Yes, for the 20th series, and we're very looking forward to be revealing not one, but two of this year's contestants here on Breakfast. So we're going to try to work out who our first guest could be. Take us away, Charlie. So we've got a number of uh, clues in the house. So the idea is that each clue could be something to do with the person who we're about to show you. The reveal will happen in the next couple of minutes. So, so why don't you start us off because you've got the first clue down here. So we've got a number of clues. If I look down here, we've got, first of all, this is going well already, a stethoscope. Oh. Okay. There we go. We're all familiar with what a stethoscope is like. What What could that be? So it could be something to do with a uh, medical drama, I'm guessing. Or indeed it could be a do Well, the obvious thing, it's a doctor, right? Okay. That would be the okay. obvious one. Stethoscope, I've got this. Doctor. I, did, I did have it on a little easel. It goes this way. Doing really well with these. Here you go. So cobbles. Cobbles, bricks, cobbles. So maybe, what are we thinking? Coronation Street. Oh, we have the stethoscope. So a doctor, a doctor from Coronation Street. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Uh, we've got a, a we've got an image. Of, where are we on on camera six there? So we've got Holly, and we've got a a, a bush there as well. So gradually you're you're pulling the pulling the clues together. I've got something back here. I've only got one, which is it? I've got so. And a pint, only, only, only one. What have you got? Which in your I lap? think, to be fair, I think that is the is the clearest clue of all. What have you got there? What have you got there? <laughs> I don't know. You just Tell had me. It. What have you got there? <laughs> I don't know. What have you got there? Isn't it one of those things that needs? Do you, you need to warn people when you have a doll in the house? Because some people get quite scared of dolls, don't they? It's a baby. It's a baby. Okay. Drum roll. Hello, actor, singer Will Mellor. Hello, Will. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that was rather that was a rather laborious way of introducing. If anybody guessed it off that baby, <laughs> <laughs> is, should we, would you like the baby? I'm all right. Would thanks. it make you feel? Like Fry the life out of me in the night. Huh? <laughs> no, it was a show I did called In the Club, where it was about babies, and obviously two pints of lager and a packet of crisp. Coronation Street, obviously BBC Hollyoaks. Bu BBC budget could only get to one. Could only, could only get half as well. I know. I'm not, and I'm also. Well, it looks a bit cloudy for me. It looks a bit crafty. I'm not even sure. I don't like a beer that I've got to eat, use a knife and fork to drink. You know them crafty beers? They're a bit thick for me. Yeah. Like a nice lager. Can you please take the baby? Can we all just right, pass thanks. it, pass it down right, the sofa? Right. We'll have a camera in it. the baby. <laughs> Spying on me while I'm at home. <laughs> um, are you excited? Uh, excited is one word for it. Terrified is another. Uh, the closer it gets. They're good emotions to have for it. Well, yeah, I Healthy. mean, it's, um, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it is because it's stepping out of my comfort zone. It's scary. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's what I said yesterday doing it, it was a long way away. And the closer it gets, it really does start to settle in. And yeah, it's getting a bit frightening now. Um, do you dance? Yeah, let's get on this train and see how far it takes us. No. Good luck. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks for, for being our on. first reveal. You're the first Strictly revealed. I'm first the first one. one. Yeah. It's downhill from here on people. <laughs> <laughs> Will Mellor, there <laughs> you go. Soon much. to Thank be you. in panties and shirts and sequins. They and spray tans, of course. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> we've got the headlines coming up in a moment. The greatest classical music festival. Curated by us, enjoyed by you. 
the BBC Proms. Fridays and Sundays on 4 and iPlayer. Don't worry about a thing. The nation's watching. Let's go. A new batch of celebrities are about to feel the heat. Boy, oh boy. Take it till you make it. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. I don't put my timer on. It's like leather boot laces. Shall I start again? Very impressive. That tastes good. Are you doing the dance to the Happy Judge? The brand new <laughs> series of Celebrity MasterChef starts Wednesday at 8 on BBC One and iPlayer. Good morning, welcome to Breakfast with Nagar Manchetti and Charlie State. Our headlines. The family of 12-year-old Archie Battersby says they want him to spend his final hours in a hospice today after losing a battle to stop his life support being withdrawn. Absolutely devastated, frustrated, angry, let down, so many emotions really. A big announcement on energy is imminent. The regulator Ofgem is expected to make changes that could affect how much you'll pay next year. I'll have the details in just a few minutes. China has begun military exercises in the waters around Taiwan after expressing anger over a visit to the island by a senior US politician. England's victorious lionesses urged the next Prime Minister to help more schoolgirls play football. We'll speak to two members of the European Championship winning team. And good morning from the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, where it was a special night of athletics for Scotland's Ailish McColgan, who, just like her mum did, took gold in the 10,000 metres, and for Katerina Johnson-Thompson, who became the champion of heptathlon once more. Good morning. Over the next few days and nights, it's going to be less humid than it has been. There'll be a lot of dry weather around, some scattered showers, a lot of which will be in the north and the west, with no significant rain in the forecast, especially where we do need it in the south and the east. I'll have all the details later in the programme. So it's that time of year when we find out who will be the contestants in Strictly Come Dancing. Will Meller, as you may have seen, was on the sofa just a moment ago. The first to be revealed, another one, another reveal coming up for you in the next half hour. Good morning. It's Thursday, the 4th of August. The mother of 12-year-old Archie Battersby says the legal battle to postpone the withdrawal of her son's life support has come to an end. It comes after the European Court of Human Rights refused an application not to postpone the withdrawal of his treatment. Now his family now wants him to be taken to a hospice. Let's talk to Catherine de Costa, who joins us from Royal London Hospital. Catherine, um, this family has fought long and hard um, to keep Archie alive um, and to keep his support going um, and this must come as a real blow now. Catherine, Catherine de Costa, thank you. The Bank of England is expected to announce it's raising interest rates again later in a bid to control rising inflation. Let's speak to our political correspondent Jonathan Blake joining us from Westminster. Morning to you Jonathan. So this could be uh, a significant rise, the largest for some time. Obviously that has implications for people's household budgets, for mortgages and things like that, but it also plays into some of the debate about the next Tory leader and the next Prime Minister. Jonathan, thank you. China has begun military exercises in the waters around Taiwan, this after expressing anger over a visit to the island by senior US politician Nancy Pelosi. Now, Ms. Pelosi left on Wednesday, but after a brief but controversial visit to the country. In response, China announced five days of necessary and just military drills. I'm going to show you some remarkable pictures from Iceland now, uh, which show the latest eruption from one of the island's many volcanoes. Now, this time, around 20 miles southwest of the capital, Reykjavik, it follows days of small earthquakes in the area. I mean, just absolutely remarkable pictures there. Um, lava flowing down the mountains, and of course, this event, obviously people being advised to stay well away, but the pictures you know, the thing about lava, it's, in, it's unstoppable, isn't it? There's nothing that can stop lava. For a moment, I thought you were going to say the thing about lava is very hot. No, I was um, not going to the, say that. The 
And what is also remarkable about those pictures is just how close people are to what's going on. And yeah. they, this, is, this is a country where they live very close to the extremes of nature. So they know where's safe and where's not safe. Is but, there anything uh, that can stop lava? I don't think so, no. I can't imagine, no. I mean, I, I think <laughs> an upslope is a problem for lava. Uh, apart from that, I don't think so. Not very much. Yeah. Um, eight minutes past eight. It's worth saying this morning that we are talking a lot about the lionesses and about what happens next. As in the idea, we, were all, we all celebrate the moment, but can we make a good thing carry on? Well, it's about the next generation, obviously. Um, they've all got together and written this open letter to the next Prime Minister to say they want equal provision for girls at school to be able to play football because and we've just been outside on the AstroTurf and there are a load of girls out there who are completely inspired and who want to kind of be encouraged and who some of them saying to me that some of their friends are saying I don't want you to talk about it anymore because I don't get to play mm. at my school so they're working hard to that. We're going to be talking to Alex Greenwood and Kira Walsh shortly. So the, those young people out there are going to get to meet the Yeah, and nice. they're going to put questions to them as well. And hopefully we might get a few tips. We might get a little training session going. Uh, let's see how the weather's looking for outside here in Salford and all of the rest of the UK as well. Carol, what have you got? I've got a bit of everything, Charlie. First of all, I want to show you this Weather Watchers picture. Look at the grass. Look how green it is. This picture was taken by one of our Weather Watchers in the Western Isles. I think Dalbeg is actually in Lewis, 14. But in some sheltered glens, temperatures overnight tonight could fall away to 5 degrees. Charlie and Naga will notice that in the morning. We will. We will. Absolutely will. Yeah. Carol, thank you. Now, in the past few minutes, the energy regulator Ofgem has announced a big change to how often the price cap is going to be reviewed. We've been talking about this. Hannah, we've been kind of expecting it, but not sure as and when it would have been announced. So, yeah, and we've got that announcement now, Naga. Remember, the price cap is the maximum amount that suppliers can charge the average customer in England, Scotland and Wales for their energy use each year. It's been rising since April last year, slowly at first, but now by increasingly bigger jumps up to the current cap of £1,971 a year. Until now, that figure's been reviewed every six months. The next decision will be published later this month and will come into effect in October when energy analysts Cornwall Insight told BBC Breakfast they expect average bills to rise to more than £3,300. Under the old plan, that level would have remained in place until next April. But now Ofgem says it will review the cap more often, every three months instead of every six. It says this will reduce the risk of energy suppliers failing, which causes huge disruption and pushes up costs for customers even more. But in reality, it will mean that bills go up yet again in January. January, Cornwall Insight say to more than £3,600 a year. Well, let's speak now to Peter Smith from the fuel poverty charity National Energy Action. Peter, thanks for joining us. What's your reaction to this today? Thanks very much, Peter. And we'll be speaking to the chief executive of Ofgem in the next half hour. Now, thanks very much. Time now, 16 minutes past eight. You may remember earlier this year, we spoke to the father of murdered PC, Nicola Hughes, who called for a new medal to honor emergency service workers killed in the line of duty. Bryn Hughes' campaign has since received huge support, including from the Scottish Government and the Mayor of Greater Manchester. As Abby Smitten reports, he's also been to meet other families who have lost loved ones in similar circumstances. It's a very moving film, and I'm very pleased to say that Bryn, David, and Adrian are all here with me this morning. Very good morning, morning. to you all. Good morning. Uh, now, I, we, we, as soon as you all three sat down, there is a lovely feeling between the three of you. You're laughing, you're chatting. It's because you share uh, uh, something you would much prefer not to. But yeah. it, how has it been? I mean, maybe you pick up first about just sort of meeting, being able to talk and share the experience. Yeah, of what I mean, we all I think we, we all share that common. Um, we will follow your story with interest. I appreciate it. it's a very personal story to come on and talk about. So thank, thank you. you. So thank, much. You. Thanks. thank you. Thank you. Time now is 8.29. Now it's time to get the news, travel and the weather where you are.
Good morning, you're watching Breakfast from our studios here in Salford with me, Charlie State. Naga is outside this morning because we're taking a moment this morning to celebrate uh, England's success in the Euros, but ask the important question as to what's going to happen next. And I believe, Naga, you've got some stars there, some heroes and some uh, young Absolutely. fans who are going to get to meet them. Yeah, I have. I've got the Ashton Pumas. They're practicing hard, as you can see back here. These are the people that have been inspired by the Euro's success, by the Lionesses' victory. And this is what it means. And we've heard, haven't we? The Lionesses have written to the Prime Minister, the future Prime Minister, to find out what's happening in terms of education, football, sorry, get hit by ball then, <laughs> football in school. You know, only 44% of secondary schools in England actually offer PE to girls. How's that going to help? How's that going to help? How are we going to get future lionesses? Well, I'm with me. I've got um, Alex Greenwood and Kira Walsh. Good morning to morning. you both. Morning. Uh, first of all, um, Alex, it's great seeing this, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. So exactly what we want to see. Exactly. And Kira, it, mean, it means so much, doesn't it? Just knowing that girls have been watching you guys, following you all, know all your names and are out here practicing at this time in the morning and want to do more of it. Yeah, it's massive, I think. That's what we set out to do this tournament was to inspire a nation and um, I know we had lots of other questions as well we'll get them going um, very kindly Alex and um, Kira have said they'll join in so do you want to kind of take them through we'll take them through some skills and get going because who else gets the chance to play with a lioness get on the pitch and show them what you're made of come on Kira you had that brilliant pass show us how you pass so show us what you're up what you're made of look at these goals let's get a ball to Kira and see if we can have a little bit of a there we go. Been passed to by a lioness. Just fantastic. Charlie, we'll get back to you. Oh, it's good to see, isn't it? Very, very inspiring. And they're just getting involved uh, right here in Salford. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. So let's uh, talk a little bit now with Hannah about uh, a story. It's changing a little bit this morning, Hannah. There is no issue about which people are more involved right now than energy prices. Every household is watching carefully. And there are all sorts of mechanisms to try and govern how it's changing. Yeah, and it's one of those things that affects all of us, isn't it? And the mechanism that we're talking about today is the price cap, the maximum amount that suppliers can charge for average energy usage in England, Scotland and Wales. It's reviewed every six months, the Ofgem regulator has said today. Uh, sorry, no, it, it used to be reviewed every six months. It will now be reviewed every three months instead. That means that energy bills are expected to rise not just in October, but in January as well. And with me is the chief executive of Ofgem, Jonathan Brearley. Jonathan, thanks for joining us. You yourself have warned that there is a very challenging winter ahead. Haven't you just made the period after Christmas even more difficult for millions of people? Well, Jonathan Brearley from Ofgem, thank you very much. Hannah, thanks very much. There? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People will be uh, worried, obviously, because energy bills is one of those issues come back to all the time. Thank you very much. 8.42 is the time now. So let's go to the Commonwealth Games. Mike is there for us this morning. And there were some, look at that shot. Looks lovely, Mike. I know you're in the square there. This morning, a lot of celebrations because there were some great sporting events last night. Real drama on the track, for example. Oh. Yes, yeah, some special stories which we are going to be talking about in just a moment. But yes, you're right. This is Victoria Square, which is coming to life. People gathering on the deck chairs to watch the action on the big screen. There'll be music later on. Rather appropriately, look, the deck chairs are in Team Scotland colours. Why is that? Because we are celebrating the achievements of Team Scotland this hour. At one point, you know, yesterday, won four gold medals in four hours. So we'll talk about that in a moment. But first, so much to look forward to for all the crowds gathering here, taking their selfies with the athletes. Hello, good morning, everybody. Should be watching the sport. Don't worry about us. <laughs> anyway, yeah, 15 gold medals to be won today. Uh, two of the highlights, Grant Thomas in the road race in the time trial and also Jack Law in the diving. So much to come. Thanks, Mike. Glorious views over Birmingham there, Mike. Just talking to some brilliant, brilliant athletes. It's fabulous. We'll have much more from Mike, of course, throughout the week. 
Of course, Mike was a very big success on Strictly Come Dancing, yeah, wasn't he? He was, not surprisingly. His gung ho approach, I think that would be fair enough. Threw himself into it, yeah, didn't he? absolutely. That's the trick. And just over a month, Strictly Come Dancing will once again return to our screens with the usual glitz, glamour, or and of course the glitter ball. So this morning we have already revealed the first of the contestants competing in what is the twentieth series, and that is the actor Will Mellor. Here's another drum roll for you. There we are, Kim Marsh, television presenter, actor and singer. Hi, Kim, how are you doing? Hello. I'm good, thank you. I'm really good. Sorry, it's a really boring backdrop, but I'm on holiday. You can see some palm trees there. Perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> That's all we need. Um, I'll tell you what, enjoy the break ahead of this because it is going to be hard work. Um, what have you been told in terms of how to prepare? You'll do it. If anyone can, you can. Listen, good luck, Kim. Enjoy your holiday. Enjoy the break <laughs> um, before it all really does go quite crazy. Have a great time. Thank and you. thanks to mum and dad as well. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye. Uh, let's see. You're watching BBC Breakfast Time now. 8.59. Let's bring you right up to date with the latest news this morning with our news headlines. The mother of 12-year-old Archie Battersby says the legal battle to postpone the withdrawal of her son's life support has come to an end. Now this comes after the European Court of Human Rights refused an application not to postpone the withdrawal of his treatment. His family now wants him to be taken to a hospice. Let's talk to Catherine de Costa, who joins us from Royal London Hospital. Catherine, another blow for the family, which has fought so hard so far. Catherine, thanks very much. Catherine de Costa there for us outside the Royal London Hospital. In the past hour, Ofgem has announced that changes to the energy price cap will be made every three months rather than the current six. The energy regulator says the move will allow prices to reflect changes to wholesale gas and electricity costs more quickly and accurately, Ofgem has also warned of a very challenging winter ahead as the energy crisis continues to impact customers. Interest rates are expected to rise to the highest level in almost three decades later today. It would mean a sixth hike in a row and it will of course impact mortgages, credit charges for millions of people. The recent rises have come as the bank attempts to control inflation, which is now at a 40-year high and predicted to rise even further. China has begun military exercises in the waters around Taiwan after expressing anger over a visit to the island by senior U.S. politician Nancy Pelosi. Ms. Pelosi left on Wednesday after a brief but controversial visit to Taiwan. In response, China announced five days of necessary and just military drills. Three minutes past nine. Carol's taking a look at the weather for us. And as well as the weather, we are looking, Carol, at, yeah, this, the driest July on record. We've been talking about it as well. Hose pipe bans coming into place for some parts of the country. And, it, and I'm sure for you, that's not a surprise because you've been following just how little rain there has been around in certain parts of the country. That's right, Naga, yes. And in fact, as you rightly said, parts of southern and southeastern England have had the driest July on record, and Met Office records go back to 1836. We could well see those fronts toppling over the north and west, introducing some rain and windier conditions at times. Come south, it's dry, and those temperatures are continuing to rise. Charlie and Naga. Thanks, Carol. Carol, thanks a lot. Pleasure. It's seven minutes past nine. Take a brief look at the headlines where you are this morning and we'll see you shortly. Now to challenge with the difference, a man from Yorkshire has been confirmed as a new Guinness World Record holder after he reached speeds of 40 miles an hour in his electric wheelchair operated by his head. This is remarkable. It is. Um, Jason Liversidge was diagnosed with motor neuron disease in 2013. He's paralysed from the neck down. He needs a ventilator to breathe. But as Joe Makel reports, that hasn't stopped his need for speed. Big round of applause. Quite right. Quite yeah, right. It's a brilliant achievement. That's all we have time for this morning. Of course, breakfast back tomorrow from 6 o'clock. Bye bye. Bye. This was back.
BBC iPlayer. Love what you find, find what you love. Binge watch brilliant shows. This is massive. Enjoy full series from current to classic. Find your next big obsession. Nice to meet you. A pleasure. Just press red. This is nice, isn't it? For the best way to watch TV on BBC iPlayer.